welcome to Armchair Sports Team Preview today the Georgia Bulldogs. So before we get into it, some background. I went to the University of Georgia. I'm an alumni. I'm a Bulldog, class of 2014. So it's probably important to know that before going in that I have my own set of biases. Now that being said, I'm not a Georgia fan. Michigan is my true love. But going into the Georgia preview, I, doing my research, I couldn't help take a look at Bill C's uh, SEC East article. In that, he had a pretty simple designation for the title, Georgia. Georgia versus existencism. I like to call it the inevitable heat death of the universe. Take a look at this program, where it's been since the last 2005. In 2005, in SAP rankings, they are the number five team. And they're the only team in the top five, the only team in the top seven, in fact, that doesn't have a national championship. Especially when you look at things, oh, I don't know, the tip pass in Auburn. That was important. The Hail Mary in Tennessee, and let's not forget fourth and third and 22, when Tua, as a freshman, throws a touchdown over cover two into the end zone. Yeah, those, uh, those are some tough times for Georgia fans. On the other time, shut up. You've been the top five team the last two, since 2005. You're in the top tier team. You could argue be the number one team in the nation with Clemson and Alabama. Times are pretty damn good. You don't know how good you really have it. As a Michigan fan, I can tell you, you can far a lot worse than seven and five under your last year in RIP. So when I take a look at Georgia, one of the major things that I take a look at is what their potential can be, right? Their blue chip ratio is right up there with Alabama. It's right up there with Ohio State is the top 70 plus percent are considered four five-star recruits. Now, while that's not everything, it's a good judge of what your team potential is. And considering before the fake punt, they had Alabama on the ropes of last year and definitely were a playoff quality team, ignoring the Texas game. There's a lot of hype going in this year, especially that this is really where the Kirby Smarts recruiting classes can take off. When you take a look at it, now the guys that are playing are his guys. They're Kirby's guys. They're not leftover Rick guys. And I think that does matter in a lot of ways, specifically in the depth you see when you take a look at this team. But when we start this preview, let's start with Jake Fromm. My opinion, Jake Fromm is one of the top five quarterbacks in the nation, and this is a great year for quarterbacks, right? As we all know, just take a look at who else you have in the SEC. In my, in my eyes, he's right behind Tua in the best of the SEC quarterback. He's clearly going to be second team SEC. But he's kind of an enigma. If you take a look at the first half he played against Alabama last year, he was awesome. Lights out. One of the best quarterback performances all year. He was absolutely insane. He was hitting passes that were very hard to open. He was throwing his receivers open to a receiving core I kind of thought was overrated, to be honest. He was lights out. And then the second half happened. Not quite as good, but I don't know how much you can blame on him. That first half was unsustainable. He was hitting NFL windows consistently. Not even NFL quarterbacks always hit NFL windows. It was pretty damn impressive. Let's take a look at his stats. 67% 67% completion percentage, 9 yards in attempt, 30 completion touchdowns. That's really damn good. Also a little weird, because if you take a look at Georgia's schedule and Georgia's team last year, Georgia, the most passes he threw that Georgia won was 24. That's low. That's like 1990s football low. That's forgetting your last 20 years of football evolution. That's insane. The three games he had over 25 pass attempts or more, all of them had more than 30. They lost. And he's a really good quarterback. I don't think this is on him. I think this is on somewhat Georgia wants to be in his scheme that they're trying to be able to do. From overall, what you can project this year, number two in the SEC behind Tua, he's a lot more athletic than he gets credit for. He's asked, he has to make a lot of tough throws. He may not have the best arm strength in the world, but it's NFL caliber for sure. He is the Georgia leader, in my opinion. And what I'm really, really interested in to see is do they unleash him or do they just stick with the running game? all the way through. Speaking of those running backs, you know, they're really good. Swift is a great, talented player. Uh, they got Dalvin Cook's the younger brother on the team, and then they've got five stars galore. I mean, they're kind of running back you if you just take a look at Michelle, Chubb, and Gurley in the last couple of years and what they're doing in the NFL. I don't really like Swift. I think he's a great third down back, but he's got a lot of bounce in him. I don't know if he really fits what Georgia traditionally wants to do, So I'm probably not as high as most people are and just thinking that they're going to immediately reload, but they're going to be pretty damn good. You don't have that much talent in the backfield. Wide receiver is probably the biggest concern, in my opinion, on the team. You know, I think when you really look at them, 
it's losing Holloman, who was on the – he was a breakout. He was going to be a breakout star of last year. I mean, you, you watch the guy, and he was a physical freak. But losing him to some shady stuff in the offseason is really hurting this core. You know, it doesn't seem like it when you take a look at it, but wide receiver experience – is actually one of the most correlated factors to how a team does. In fact, it's only high in quarterback and offensive line. The R ratio is somewhere in like 0.73%. It's relatively correlated to how a team, team's passing offense ends up being. There is not a whole lot of guys left to be able to catch the ball. Um, I believe Tyler Simmons, Tyler Simmons who's on sides, of course, is their leading pass catcher that's returning with like 16 career passes, and that's a problem overall, right? Now, may not be a problem if you're in Georgia because you're going to run the ball 70% of the time. And really, that's only going to have an effect when you play the big boys. However, you do play Auburn. You do play a, in Florida team that should be improved. You play Notre Dame, who has a very, very good defensive line. It's not going to matter for most of the season. It might matter in the really big games, though. Moving on to the offensive line, this is the strength of the team. Sam Pittman is top three best offensive line um, technique um, and recruiters in the country. He, what he's done with George's offensive line and what I'll talk about in the Texas A&M offensive line preview has been fantastic. I mean, they're dominant, right? They ran the ball four, or four times more than they passed. They ran the ball almost 70% of the time, and you just couldn't stop them, you know, unless you could, and then you beat them. It was um, you know, one thing with Jim Chaney leaving is the thing I really liked about Chaney is he had a r- bunch of really creative run scheme plays that I think really got to get open. Well, it looked like a pretty generic inside-outside zone scheme. Uh, it, it was pretty complicated, and they executed really well. Very interested to see how that holds up. You know, it was crazy. Last year, if Georgia pulled a lineman, it was like a 20-yard game. It's like nobody ever saw it. And they did it a couple times a game. I understand it's a constraint play for them, but I, I just don't understand how it always worked and no one was prepared for it. Um, they have three returning starters, which is a big deal. They're almost boring to talk about. Because unless you are Auburn, unless you're Notre Dame, um, maybe South Carolina, Texas A&M, we'll see. Um, and then in the SEC championship game, assuming they get there, they're going to pay the hell out of everybody. Really not a whole lot of question. Georgia's defense is a little interesting here. And the fact that they were really, really good, had a couple outright stars the last couple of years. Specifically, it's hard not to consider um, Roquan Smith, who's crushing it in the um, crushing it in the NFL now. Um, and their quarterback, whose name escapes me, Baker, I believe, who is now was a top 10 pick at quarterback. They don't really have that level of a star here. But they're just good everywhere. And there's certainly enough star talent and enough ideas to think that they might get some breakup players, but I don't know. Right. So they are very experienced at tackle. They're very good. Um, I think they were all honorable mention SEC, but they weren't like game breakers at offensive tackles. They were better than, you know, pluggers. They got some pressure on the quarterback, but they weren't game breakers all that much. Um, and I think you see the same at the defensive end um, side and, and, Note here, I know Georgia plays a 3-4, but they were really more of a one-gap scheme team last year, which, while not necessarily what Kirby has run at Alabama, is kind of what they've more run at Georgia. So we're going to treat this more in a 4-3 aspect, considering they're a one-gap, right? You know, after you get past the top guys, though, there is talent. There's a lot of talent. But there isn't, like, a guy you know who's just going to break out and be that all-consuming, destroy Tokyo-type monster. And, and I do wonder if that will be a challenge when you get to the really, really great teams. And anyone who doesn't have a top-tier offensive line, they're going to destroy. And a team that I consider a top-three team in the country, we're kind of nitpicking everywhere here. You know, interesting, at linebacker, it's, it's a lot of the same, same way. Though that said, I do think Monty Rice does have a chance to be a really big breakout player for them. I, I like him a lot. He barely missed a tackle on pro football focus and yeah, sample sizes regardless. We just watch him play, and, and the guy gets it. Um, and, and I think he is a chance to be their breakout linebacker star. But it's a lot like DL to me, and it's solid, but it's not like spectacular, all-consuming destruction um, level. It's really interesting to me that Nolan Smith has gotten a lot of practice hype coming here this early that there's even been some projections to see him start. 
know, you never like seeing a true freshman start. I know what they're kind of whatever star death backer four two whatever. They're a very athletic linebacker position. It, it's that is an easier place to transition to. But I did think that was interesting. I thought Walter Grant played solid last year. And they really think they got something. Um, but overall, you know, I, I think it's I think it's the same. It's real solid, no star, but that's going to do it for just about everybody. You know, can someone break out? Of course, um, but I don't know. That's been Kirby Smart's defense. They've been so good, but they've been boring. Not a whole lot of havoc historically created with them. And I kind of speak to that when we get to the coordinator area from it. Um, secondary, I mean, again, I think both Reed and LeCant are very, very good players. I think they're both draftable players. I think they're mid-round picks. I don't think they're first-round guys. Um, but I think that means a lot. And an interesting thing about Georgia, and maybe something, if you're taking a look at what to project, what team in tackles? For good teams, that doesn't happen. You don't get your safeties and cornerbacks and defensive backs. They're not normally your tackle leader. And it says something that they had a lot of plays get to five yards, but we're really good at holding them down. But it also says something that maybe they don't, they're not going to just overrun you. A really good offense can execute their way down the field. Now, they have to be really good, obviously. Look at last year. They were a top defense. But I kind of expect that overall this year again, right? Real good, probably not the out-and-out star, probably not amazing. You know, when I take a look at this team as an overview, like I said, they're a top three team to me. They're a tier one team. It's just not quite there. And I think a lot of it to me is, to me, Georgia's Alabama. They are. If you take a look at Georgia, they are absolutely Alabama. That sounds great. They're Alabama 2010. They're Alabama 2011. With the way they want to play football, the way they design their team, the way their defense is, everything screams, this is Alabama 2010, 2011. That's going to beat a lot of teams with the talent you have. I don't know what's going to be Bama, though. I don't know what's going to be Clemson. I don't know if that's going to get you to the hump. Because Bama doesn't look like Alabama 2010, 2011. Bama is completely different. Clemson, completely different. Alabama is no longer the run the damn ball team. Georgia's run the damn ball team. I kind of think they might be a few years late to this. And I think especially when you look at their coordinator hires, Jim Chaney's a very good coordinator. He's a very good QB coach. He kind of just brought, hired an internal guy with no experience. He has a little bit, yes, I grant you, and it was okay. It was mediocre. Hey, it's not, it's nothing, it's not a rock star that brought in. You, it screams, I'm going to out talent and I'll execute you. That's what Michigan tried to do in the 90s. And yeah, they won national championship in 97 on a historically great defense. They're also disappointed a lot. And, that, and even probably more relevant, it's what LSU did. How did LSU fare against Bam the last couple of years? That, that, that's kind of where I look at this is they are LSU, Bama, seven, eight years ago. A lot of the who they're trying to build to is to be that team. Is that enough to get you over the hump? It's enough to win a hell of a lot of games. I'm not sure it's enough to get over the hump. This year, I think it's a lot like last year. They're going to be a top five team all year. Probably fall just short. We'll see. Be sure to follow Armchair Sports on Facebook. Follow us at ACS Sports Talk at Twitter. Also check out our YouTube channel, Armchair Sports Talk, for more of for more of the preview videos. We're gonna be doing eight uh, from each conference. Check them out.